Hey there, got the Canon R6 Mark II this morning and that's what I'm shooting on right now. I am so excited about this camera for several reasons and I will talk about those a little bit later on in the video. Now, like I usually do when I get a new camera, the first thing I like to do is just go out and shoot with it, take a look at some of the images and get my overall impressions and share those with you. So that's what this video is gonna be. Now disclaimer up front here, I bought this with my own money, so this video is not sponsored and the opinion about this camera in this video and all videos moving forwards are definitely my own. Now if you're a photographer, I think that there is not a lot of excitement for the R6 Mark II over the R6, there's four more megapixels, better autofocus system, those sorts of things. But as a videographer, I am so, <laughs> so excited about this camera for several reasons. First of which, it shouldn't overheat in 4K24. I know that sounds silly, but <laughs> that's a huge difference and uh, a deal breaker for me if a camera is gonna overheat in 4K24. Also, it shoots an oversampled 4K60, which is something the R5 can't even do. So really excited about this and getting to play with this and test all sorts of different things. We really curious about autofocus, dynamic range, low light, all that kind of stuff, which I'll, I'll compare uh, this camera with other cameras like the a7 IV, the R7, those sorts of things in later videos and give the full rundown. But I, as I said, I want to get some images. So I am out in my favorite spot here and I usually come here to go shoot uh, birds. It doesn't look like there's a lot of birds out here today and we're definitely past peak for fall foliage. So it's not super pretty, but I'm going to throw the 100 to 500 on here and see if I can grab some, uh, some images of some birds. All right, so I was out here for a few hours and not much luck. Hopefully you already saw the footage I shot and I got a couple birds. This is, as I said, my favorite spot, but there really weren't a lot of birds out here today. Anyways, testing out the IBIS in the camera, which is always a question mark with all these cameras, especially the Canon cameras because they tend to have those wobbles in the corners. So I'm on the 15 to 35 at 15 millimeters. I have the lens IS and the IBIS on, but I don't have any electronic stabilization turned on. I'm just holding the camera by the lens. So curious how this looks and, um, yeah, it's been fun to work this camera so far, but I'm really curious about what the image looks like and all that sort of stuff. Anyways, I don't like doing this walking and talking and holding the camera thing. Let me find a spot to sit down. All right, so <laughs> a little bit of story time here. All right, so thinking back to 2020, I was shooting on the EOS R, doing a lot of uh, vlogging and, and filming and stuff for my other channel. Uh, I was really excited about the release of the R6 and the R5. And as most of you know, if you're watching this, there was a little bit of a problem with overheating. <laughs> and I actually really wanted the R6. I, di I didn't want the R5, I really wanted the R6. And then they both overheated and, you know, I wound up buying an A7S III and shoot on Sony for a while and going back and forth ever since. And now I just shoot on both systems because I like both for different reasons. But I really did want an R6 and eventually I wound up using an R5 for a while too because there are some modes in the R5 that don't overheat. This is before the latest firmware now the camera doesn't really overheat. But the R6 Mark II doesn't overheat supposedly in 4K24. And you know, it has some other advantages over the R6. And uh, yeah, so it's basically the camera that I wanted two years ago, which is kind of crazy to think about that it seems like it's a small upgrade over the R6, but in a lot of ways it's a big upgrade. And I know some people were thinking, oh, it's just a firmware thing. and it's got to be different hardware in there <laughs> and uh, the way it cools and all that sort of stuff. So for me personally, this is a camera I'm really excited about because it's sort of the style camera that I like. Uh, I don't really want to have super high megapixels because I don't do much photography. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like kind of the sweet spot for a lot of people. Also the price, and it's going to be very competitive with, uh, you know, the Sony a7 IV, which is a super popular camera, which I own and really love. So yeah, I'm really excited to explore this camera and there's some great lenses, obviously for the Canon system, which I love, like the 15 to 35 and the 100 to 500, which are lenses that I use often. So I'm excited to see what they can do. 
Anyways, sun is getting a little bit lower in the sky here and I'm gonna head home and edit up this footage and then I'll give you my first impressions about how it looks and how it's been using this. Well, I just edited up the footage and I have to say, <laughs> I was really impressed with how good it looked and I really wasn't that surprised. It is a 6K oversampled image and it has great detail and sharpness as you would expect with that 6K oversample. But I also found the colors to be really, really accurate and it was super easy to color grade. So I shot all that in C-Log3 and Cinema Gamut and I didn't use any LUTs, but I graded it by hand. And if you have any questions about how I personally expose or grade C-Log3, I made a detailed video about how I do that with the R5 and the R7, but it works exactly the same on the R6 Mark II. I'll leave that video linked down below. So as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I shot the whole vlog section on the 15 to 35 and the 100 to 500. I did mention there are some great lenses for the Canon RF system, and yes, they are very expensive, but some of them are absolutely incredible. I'm the kind of person that buys fewer lenses that are really good. I try to invest in really good lenses, and when I need a new lens, I'll save up and try to buy something that's really nice. So I've leaned very heavily on the 15 to 35 over the last few years. I really do like this lens. And the 100 to 500 I picked up somewhat recently, and I absolutely love it for shooting wildlife. It is a spectacular lens. Now let's get on talking about the ergonomics, the build quality, and the usability of the camera. So the R6 Mark II is pretty much what you would expect out of a Canon hybrid camera. Great ergonomics and feel. I have used the R3, the R5, the R5C, and the R7, so I'll compare it with those. I've never actually used the original R6, so I can't really speak on how this compares with that. But overall, in terms of the build quality, I would say it's very similar to the R7 in terms of the, the fit and finish, the buttons and the dials, and sort of how the camera feels. Of course, it is a little bit larger. It has a longer grip, and it's also a little bit heavier than the R7 being a full-frame camera. But it has sort of more of like a prosumer feel than a professional feel. Maybe I'm just a little spoiled after using cameras like the R3 and the R5. But not really any big complaints here. Um, it does feel great to hold in the hand like pretty much any Canon camera with a nice deep grip. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour around with the buttons and dials and stuff like that. So there is this button in the front here, which I didn't even realize uh, before I left uh, to go shoot. It is a customizable button. I'll have to figure out something cool for that. Onto the top of the camera, one big difference here um, is the fact that the power switch is over here on the right hand side, which I actually really like because when you're holding the camera in your right hand, you can easily uh, hit the power on and off with the same hand. I actually really like that. And uh, I think a lot of people complain about that just because it's different. But again, if you're switching between cameras often, all the things are always in different places. For example, uh, the R7, which I shoot on a lot, has the power switch right here. I kept on hitting the uh, aperture control uh, over here <laughs> instead of the power switch. So it's just muscle memory. But after a few rounds, you, you get used to it. Uh, and then over here, you have a switch to go from photo to video, which I like because I'm pretty much always in video. But also then you can utilize C1 through C3 for both photo and video, which people really do like. Not much else on the top of the camera. We have a record button and also a function button. So let's talk about the back a little bit. So the back has pretty much what you expect in terms of buttons and dials. One thing I do want to point out is that it does have three exposure dials, which I love and wish the R7 did. So the back wheel I set to uh, ISO, the top one I set to aperture, and the front one I, sh I set to shutter speed. But overall, uh, there's plenty of buttons here you can customize and the ergonomics and stuff work great. In terms of the LCD and uh, the EVF, the LCD is a three inch screen with the same resolution as the R7, so no real upgrade there. The EVF is better than the R7, but not as good as the R5. Kind of what you expect in this price range, and I have to say after using you know the 3.2 inch screen on the R5 and the R3, um, it is much nicer to have a bigger screen with more resolution, but in terms of the colors and stuff, they're fine. It's kind of what you'd expect with a camera uh, at this price point. Uh, a couple other things to point out here, SD cards. So we have dual SD cards over here. I always use these ProGrade V90 cards. Uh, they work in pretty much every camera and they've been very reliable. If you're lo looking for a recommendation, these are great. I'll leave a link down below if you are interested in picking one up. In terms of the ports, <laughs> we have kind of the standard ports. We have the headphone jack, the microphone jack. We have a remote port, USB, and then of course, the micro HDMI port. I know. <laughs> uh, in terms of batteries, uh, we have the standard LPE6 NH batteries, which you'll find in all the Canon mirrorless cameras. 
and uh, we'll be curious to see how the battery life is after shooting with it for a while. Supposedly it does better, uh, you get more um, shots in terms of photography, but um, I didn't really pay attention too much <laughs> while I was out shooting. Uh, but overall, build quality is is great. Um, if it was a joy to use, I didn't really have any complaints with uh, you know how the camera worked and operated. All right, so there are a couple things I want to point out on the camera that stood out to me right away. So first of all, we press the, the Q button here to get to the quick menu, and we go under here to the movie recording size where you select your bit rate, codec, frame rate, all that stuff. It has that sort of old school menu where you have to go through and just like pick the one you want. I really like the new system that you see in the R7 and I think it's in the R5 too, where you can go through and pick like 4K or 1080p. You pick your frame rate and you pick your codec and it's just really easy to see everything. So you have to go and like make sure you're on the right one here. The other thing is the autofocus system. So in terms of the different subjects to detect, you can do person, uh, animal, car, or turn it off. But there's also this auto mode, which I played with a little bit, but I need to explore a little bit more. When I was filming myself, I had it on auto mode, but then I got a little bit nervous because uh, I only had a couple hours to shoot. So I had it on the animal autofocus setting when I was out shooting the, uh, the birds and stuff. Now, what another thing that's interesting about the quick menu here is that there's actually a couple of pages with the quick menu. So if you press the Q button again, we have this second page here, which allows you to change movie cropping, uh, record options, and also the frame rate options here. And then if you see on the top, there's two dots. So we can actually go over to the second page where you can change your C log settings, your movie recording size, and you can turn your HDR on and off. So this is handy. Um, I. It's a little bit cumbersome, but I got used to it. One thing I was diving into here often was the movie cropping. So this is where you turn your, you know, your APS-C crop on and off here. And um, anyway, so that's in there. You can cycle that through by just pressing the quick menu uh, a bunch of times. All right, so another thing I noticed that was pretty interesting is that when you put it into 4K60, it actually gives you a warning about heat. So if we go in 4K60 here and we select that, and we back out of this, it gives you a warning that uh, under these settings, the camera may turn off suddenly in case of rise in internal temperature. And it says it every single time. I don't know if there's a way to turn it off. It's pretty annoying. Um, but anyways, that was uh, something I noticed. Now the R6 Mark II has false color, which is an amazing exposure assist tool, but it's very quirky on this camera. And I do hope they change this in a future firmware, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you press the menu button, and we go over to the camera, page seven, you can see there's a false color there, but it is grayed out. So if we hit it, it says restricted by the following settings or conditions, the log settings. So let's go into the log settings. What this is, is going to be the view assist. So if you turn the view assist on, you can't use false color. So if you turn this off, then you can back out of here and you can turn on the false color. So there's the false color. I actually, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it this way, but I have it uh, mapped to this button here to turn false color on and off. Also, when you have uh, focus peaking on, you can't use false color as well. So I just wanted to let you know about that too. All right, so those are the first things that stood out to me after getting the camera this morning, going out and shoot, shooting with it and editing the footage. And I just wanna make a quick video to let people know about the capabilities of the camera and get a sense of the image quality and how the camera works and feels and all those sorts of things. Of course, I will get into all of my nerdy tests that I like to do, testing things like dynamic range, low light, overheating, autofocus. And I will compare this heavily against the a7 IV because they are very, very similar and direct competitors, both in terms of capabilities and price. I'll take a look at how it does against the R7, although I have to say that I think the R6 Mark II is gonna beat the R7 in pretty much every way except for the price. Also, as they use the camera more, I will report on anything that I figure out, and I will also make a full menu setup guide after I have the camera set up the way I like it, because if you're picking up an R6 Mark II and you're looking for some recommendations for a starting place, I think that would be really, really helpful. Also, maybe I'll give you some lens recommendations and stuff like that. So if you have any questions about the R6 Mark II, <laughs> of course, I just got the camera, but any questions about things you'd like me to explore or make videos about, please let me know down in the comments. Also, if you're looking to pick up an R6 Mark II, there are affiliate links in the description it would be greatly appreciated if you could check those out. They don't cost you anything extra and they really help me out a lot. So also, please hit subscribe down below. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.